While some Pokémon haven't been included in recent games' regional dexes, a more pressing permanent decision made by Game Freak was the call to remove certain moves from the games altogether. The Pokémon will certainly return at some point down the road, but we can't say the same for all the moves that have been culled after Generation 7. Today, let's talk about Pokémon's deleted moves. Now, dozens of moves have been deleted from the game and aren't usable as of Generation 8 or 9, but I want to focus on the moves that are relevant to competitive Pokémon. But we will touch on some fun niche moves that weren't super common here and there. Beyond that, a ton of moves aren't usable in Generation 9 specifically, but those are mostly due to the sole user of the move not being in the game, like Anchor Shot on Delmize. But it's likely that these moves aren't just outright gone and will return. Anyways, if you enjoy this video at any point in time, do me a favor and leave a like and subscribe because we're well on the way to 100,000 subscribers. Let's begin. Beginning with arguably the most important move to have ever been removed from the game, we have Hidden Power. Now, Hidden Power is a relatively weak move with powerful implications. Hidden Power was a 70 base power special move and had its typing decided by the user's IVs. Here's a chart that shows the highest possible IVs a Pokémon can have for each Hidden Power type. For a long time, certain Hidden Powers had minor drawbacks. However, in Generation 7, Bottle Caps were introduced, allowing for Pokémon with certain Hidden Powers to be bred for, then have their IVs corrected to be perfect. Hidden Power was a really powerful tool for a lot of Pokémon, allowing them to hit super effective damage on Pokémon that they normally wouldn't be able to touch. Some examples of this would be Electro-types running Hidden Power Ice to be able to deal massive damage to Landorus T, and Fairy-types running Hidden Power Fire to deal with Steel-types such as Kartana or Ferrothorn. Any Pokémon with a decent special attack set was capable of viably running Hidden Power to cover for a Pokémon that otherwise wouldn't be able to be dealt with. While not typically a hard counter for these Pokémon due to its low 70 base power, it was more of a tool to score a KO on these Pokémon once they were weakened. One of the biggest benefits of this move was the fact that it didn't have any indicator of what the type was besides the damage it would deal to the targets. For example, if your opponent had a Tapu Lele click Hidden Power into your Steel type and it dealt super effective damage, it would typically be Hidden Power Fire, but you couldn't discount it being ground or fighting. In Gen 9, this move has basically been replaced with Terra Blast, but this is just kind of diet Terra Blast, you know? Okay, so we're basically going in descending order of importance here, but the next most important move to be removed from competitive was definitely Return and Frustration. I consider these one move because they basically are. These were physical normal type moves that had their base power range from 1 to 102 depending on the Pokémon's friendship stat, with Return reaching max power at max friendship and Frustration reaching max power at minimum friendship. Funny enough, if you get technical with it, it was optimal to always run Frustration. This is because if your Pokémon was copied by a Ditto or Smeargle using Transform, it would hit like a wet noodle since most of them would be at or near maximum friendship. Same goes for niche stuff like Copycat. Basically, any physical attacking normal type Pokémon that wasn't running Double Edge or Giga Impact or something was gonna want to run these moves since it's hard to beat a no-drawback, 100% accurate 102 base power move. Mega Glalie and Salamence would also occasionally run Return but because their abilities turn the move into a 102 base power Ice or Flying type move respectively. The most notable Pokémon to run this move was definitely VGC 2017 and 2018 Snorlax though. This is because the high base power comboed with Belly Drum allowed for Snorlax to run very little attack investment and still pick up massively important one-shots. Obviously, saving on the attack investment allows for Snorlax to invest more into its defenses, allowing for it to set up Belly Drums easier and survive hits. Gen 7 Snorlax was really something else, I should actually probably make a video about it. But yeah, Return was a massively important move that was removed as of Generation 8, for reasons that I can only assume to be diversifying normal type move pools and nerfing Snorlax. Okay, so this one really annoyed me, but the move Snatch was removed after Generation 7. This is a really niche move that could be super useful in VGC if used correctly. Snatch was a dark type move with plus 4 priority that would cause the user to lie in wait for another Pokemon to use a status move and then steal it from them. This functions to do two things. It would first and foremost prevent the opponent from using the move this turn, but even cooler, it would cause your Pokemon to use the move instead. Most important of these moves were Tailwind and Belly Drum, but the move was so versatile that it could be used to shut down a ton of strategies. While Snatch wasn't terribly common in VGC, it was mostly due to the move not having a ton of users that were viable, or at least viable users that wanted to run the move over anything else. Nonetheless, Snatch ended up winning the World Championships on Paul Ruiz's team in 2018. According to Paul, he decided to run Snatch on his Incineroar because it was a reliable way to stop Belly Drum on Snorlax due to it being a higher priority move than Fake Out, meaning that if the opposing team led with Incineroar and a Snorlax, Paul's Incineroar would always be able to prevent the Belly Drum from going off by snatching it rather than risking getting faked out by a faster Incineroar. Along with that, he could stop Setup on Cresselia with Calm Mind and Moonlight, and of course was able to steal Tailwind from its various users the move in the format. Like I said, Snatch wasn't a terribly common move in the game, but the fact that it got removed from the game the generation after we saw its potential is just a crazy decision. 
Skydrop is a rather unimpressive move in singles, but in doubles it's actually a pretty useful tool on a few Pokemon. Skydrop was a physical 60 base power flying type move which would take the user and the target into the sky, leaving the target unable to move on that turn and then dropping them and dealing damage on the next. This was useful for temporarily disabling a follow me user or delaying Trick Room from going off an extra turn. This was also useful for leaving Skydrop Pokemon open to being attacked on the turn it was dropped since it can't protect that turn. The move does however have a weight limit to it as Pokemon above 200 kilograms cannot be lifted. A few notable Skydrop Drop users in Gen 7 were Tapu Koko and, on occasion, Aerodactyl. However, Assault Vest Tapu Koko was definitely the more common of these two, and it was a really common move on it in 2017. Tail Glow, while a very uncommon move in competitive, is nonetheless a very important move to a few Pokemon's move pools. The few Pokemon that learn them include Manaphy, Zerkatree, and Volbeat. One of these things is not like the others. Anyways, I want to acknowledge that Tail Glow was also included in BDSP, but it wasn't included in Sword and Shield or Scarlet and Violet, even when Zerkatru was added to the Sword and Shield DLC, so I still consider this to be a deleted move. While this pool of Pokemon that learned the move is super small, all of them rely on it to be viable in some form. In singles, Manaphy would use this move to set up and sweep versus opposing teams, but we play VGC here, so we're not going to focus too much on the mythical Pokemon. The true crime here is against Zerkatru, and Volbeat I guess. Zergatry is already on the verge of being the least viable Ultra Beast in BGC, just barely edging out Guzzlord, and it really needed Tail Glow to work. Its middling bulk and speed meant that it required damage control like Intimidate and Screen support, along with a lot of defense investment to get its Tail Glow off. At that point, its ridiculous special attack stat would allow for it to start picking up KOs with Thunderbolt or Dazzling Gleam. Without Tail Glow, Zergatry is limited to Calm Mind boosting, or just trying to snowball its special attack stat via Beast Boost but that's hardly worth the effort. Tail Glow may legitimately be the only thing keeping this bundle of buyers together, and I really hope that this move comes back at some point. Volbeat too, I guess. I guess he kind of needs it. Alright, so we're getting to the moves that aren't super important in VGC, but still matter enough to not have been removed, in my opinion. Because of that, summaries are going to be a bit shorter and more rapid fire. First one on this list has to be Spotlight. This move saw usage in competitive in one generation. Yeah, Spotlight was added to Sun and Moon and then immediately removed in Sword and Shield, likely to never return. This was a normal type move that would make it so that all moves from the target's opponents will target that Pokemon instead of their intended target. You could argue that this move was basically made just to be cheeky in Battle Royales, but it nonetheless had a niche in competitive, because this move would override the effects of Follow Me, Rage Powder, Ally Switch, Storm Drain, Lightning Rod, or any other possible form of redirection. They removed Ally Switch Counterplay the generation before they gave Ally Switch to like 100 Pokemon. It really was kind of dumb. Pursuit is a physical dark type move that only has 40 base power but a very powerful gimmick to it. If the target Pokemon switched out on the turn it was used, Pursuit would hit the target before it switches and double in power. While not common in doubles, it was a really powerful tool in singles that definitely didn't have any business getting removed. It was also a useful tool for Pursuit trapping against ghosts and psychic type Pokemon, removing them from play and opening the path to victory for many teams. Here's a fun fact about Pursuit that a lot of people don't know, since it wasn't common in doubles. In doubles, Pursuit will redirect to any Pokemon that tries to switch out on that turn regardless of what Pokemon was originally attacked or if a redirecting move was used. Pretty cool, huh? Map Block was only learned by two Pokemon, being Greninja and Throw. This move was a fighting type 1 that blocked all incoming damage from attacks for both the Pokemon and its allies. What makes it different from Protect, though, is that it can only be used in the first turn the Pokemon's out on the field and doesn't have any increased priority. This move is no longer usable as of Generation 9, but its most viable user wasn't even Generation 8, as Greninja was not in Sword and Shield. But truly, its best user had to be Smeargle back in Generation 7. Again, not the most common move on Smeargle, but despite this, Marcus Statter did use a map block Smeargle on this team to top cut the US National Championships in 2017. I'm just not realizing that there were a lot of 2017 like references in this video and that's because that's like the last time a lot of these moves were usable. <laughs> Assist had to be one of the most volatile moves ever made. The move would just allow for the user to randomly use one of the moves its partner Pokemon knew. It could be really lame or cause some insane strategies to pop up. A great example of this is Void Cats. This was a strategy that used Prankster Lyapard to have priority on Assist and always called Dark Void from its partner Smeargle by making sure that every other move on the team wasn't callable by Assist. While powerful, the major downside of the strategy is that all of your moves kinda suck. Yeah, the opponent will usually have both of their Pokemon asleep for most of the game, but who cares when you're running Focus Punch and Dig as your damaging moves. This move is no longer usable as of Generation 8. 
The final move I want to discuss today is Eterna Beam, which was introduced into Generation 8 and then removed Frame 1 of Gen 9. This was one of the signature moves of Eternatus, and I know exactly why they removed it. Eterna Beam was just a Dragon-type Hyper Beam, and it was really cool. The move would cause Eternatus to fly into the sky, turn into its Eternamax form, and then annihilate the target with a Death Beam. Right there. This is why the move isn't in Generation 9. That model right there. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are open world games where battle can take place just about anywhere, from small gyms to open fields to densely packed forests. Because of this, a gigantic Eternamax model can't reasonably be fit into the scene without it looking bugged or clipping through geometry. While this move wasn't great and competitive, it is really a shame that one of the coolest moves in Generation 8 is no longer usable in Generation 9, just one game later. At least we still have Dynamax Cannon. That's kind of cool, I guess. But those are the moves that Game Freak deleted from Pokemon, at least the ones that matter in VGC or were just kind of fun and I wanted to talk about. But there are certainly other moves that I know that you guys miss, so go ahead and tell me what moves you missed the most in the comment section down below, and leave a like and sub while you're down there. If you enjoy my content and want to support it further, be sure to check out my Patreon page and donate to see your name at the end of my videos. All these beautiful people here have already done it. You can do the same by getting a YouTube membership which also supports me, and you can do that entirely on YouTube, you don't even have to make a new account, and I would really appreciate that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.